Greetings everyone and welcome to another lecture of uh, pulmonary medicine. Today we are going to talk about non-invasive ventilation. The use of non-invasive ventilation is uh, basically to give breathing support. We give oxygen and we give pressure support, positive pressure. All right. The same uh, principle as what happened in mechanical ventilation, except that this is a non-invasive method. We use masks, we use uh, helmets, okay? Uh, so without intubation, okay. The 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 means w uh, through which we give this non-invasive is uh, BiPAP mostly, okay. Uh, first, we need to know these uh, uh, definitions. What's IPAP is the inspiratory uh, positive pressure, all right. Uh, EPAP is the expiratory positive pressure. The IPAP is higher. The EPAP is lower. The trigger is the transition from the low EPAP to the higher IPAP. And the pressure support we give this patient is the difference between these, between the inspiratory, okay, between the inspiratory uh, positive uh, airway pressure and the expiratory uh, positive pressure, okay. This is the graph of the pressure time in an invasive ventilation. As you can see here, here's the negative deflection. So this patient started the uh, the trigger, okay? And then the, the, the machine uh, gave the positive uh, pressure support, all right? Uh, the most important thing they ask about uh, non-invasive ventilation is uh, the indications, okay? And there is strong evidence and there is weak evidence to the use of non-invasive ventilation. Uh, the most common ones is the acute exacerbation of COPD, all right? Severe exacerbations of COPD with pH less than 7.35. Uh, the second most common one is the acute cardi cardiogenic uh, pulmonary edema. Others like uh, when we said about in mechanical ventilation, we talked about the trial of extubation. Sometimes you, you, if, if the patient stays for a long time on mechanical ventilation, you need to extubate him to non-invasive, all right? Also to prevent the recurrence of uh, severe respiratory failure after mechanical ventilation. Other ones that maybe we can use them, yes, uh, in immunocompromised uh, uh, actually, this is a moderate evidence. Immunocompromised patients with acute respiratory failure, also the post-operative uh, cases with hypoxemic respiratory failure. Uh, in acute asthma exacerbations, it's weak. I mean, you can use it, but it, it's it's weak evidence. Also, we don't know about this in early mild ARDS, all right? Contraindications. Uh, even if there is a strong indication to use the non-invasive mechanical ventilation, sometimes you cannot use uh, non-invasive ventilation due to a contraindication. For example, uh, cardiac and respiratory arrest, all right? Uh, any type of hemodynamic instability, either hypertension, either uh, organ failure, all right? Uh, uh, severe uh, acidosis, okay? A high aspiration risk. Patients come in with uh, strokes, uh, for example, with dysphagia, uh, excessive vomiting, all right? Uh, patients who are unable to protect the upper airways, these ones you cannot use non-invasive ventilation and you prefer the invasive mechanical ventilation, all right? Severe impaired uh, level of consciousness, uh, facial surgery, trauma, anything, any deformity in the face, uh, any upper airway obstruction, all right? Recurrent, uh, or sorry, recent upper airway or upper GI uh, surgeries uh, due to bleeding maybe, okay? Uh, prolonged uh, duration of ventility support is anticipated. Uh, some cases like uh, severe ARTS, you just gonna start with uh, mechanical ventilation, all right? So the most important note here is that if there is no improvement within two hours of non-invasive ventilation, you immediately start the invasive intubation. Uh, so this is to prevent the respiratory arrest, all right? So in any indication, we, we, we decide to use non-invasive ventilation when do we start non-invasive ventilation? Okay, when do we start? What are the clinical parameters that lets us start the non-invasive ventilation? Dyspnea, tachypnea, all right? More than 24 uh, uh, respiratory rate in, in obstructive lung diseases, more than 30 in restrictive lung diseases. Increased work of breathing, access, the, the excessive use of accessory muscles with retractions or by the paradoxical abdominal movement, the acute hypercapnic respiratory failure, same thing, you know, with pH lower than 7.35, PCO2 more than 45, okay? 
one of the complications of non-invasive ventilation now, uh, the use of, uh, especially with the use of tight masks, you know, there can be a nasal bridge necrosis. Or sometimes we use the protective synthetic coverings to protect uh, the, the nasal bridge from uh, necrosis, all right? Air leaking is a big problem, sometimes leads to prolongation of the, uh, uh, to increase uh, prolongation of inspiration and due to increased uh, flow of the machine, increases the flow when, when it senses uh, that the, there's air leaking and this can lead to uh, the synchrony. Uh, gastric distension, uh, nasal dryness and congestion, uh, mucus plugging and hypotension, as we said, uh, the peep pressure uh, makes the, uh, the, 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 decreases the venous return. And this, if, if there's too much pressure that can lead to maybe hypotension. A 55 year old man hospitalized due to worsening shortness of breath and orthopnea over the last three days. He had a coronary bypass surgery three years ago. Temperature is 37.2 degrees Celsius. Blood pressure is 140 over 90. Pulse pressure is 120 uh, beats per minute. Respiratory rate is 32 per minute. Oxygen saturation is 88 on non-rebreather face oxygen mask. He has excessive use of accessory respiratory muscles. Physical exam, exam shows S3, bilateral, uh, bi basilar crackles, lung crackles, uh, lower limb bilateral edema, EKG shows sinus tachycardia, non-specific T-wave changes, chest x-ray shows cardiomegaly and bilateral pulmonary edema. The patient was placed on non-invasive ventilation already. So how this will help uh, or be beneficial to this patient? Okay, so we talked about that the, there is strong evidence to the use of non-invasive uh, ventilation for uh, acute uh, congestive uh, heart failure, all right? So will this increase the dead space ventilation? I mean, we, we know that uh, positive pressure ventilation will lead to less dead space because it, it, it recruits the alveoli, it increases the ventilation, it leads to vent better it leads to better uh, ventilation uh, perfusion ratios so and decreases the vq mismatch so this is uh, it is wrong actually it will decrease the dead space ventilation will it decrease the preload yes this is the correct answer i mean uh, as we can see in in the use of we talked about this mechanical ventilation in the use of positive pressure ventilation there uh, happens a, a decrease in the uh, venous return to the right side and, and consequently to the left heart. So there will be a decrease in the preload. So this is will uh, make it easier for the heart to pump blood. So it will help this patient, all right? Uh, will it lead to increase in the afterload? Uh, no, the non-invasive ventilation leads to decrease in the afterload. Uh, will it decrease the minute ventilation? Uh, we know that uh, non-invasive mechanical ventilation increases the tidal volume. So this is, will lead to increased minute ventilation. Again, the correct answer is B, a decrease in preload. Uh, thank you for listening and subscribe for our YouTube channel and follow us on uh, Facebook, Mac Medicine. Uh, thank you again and uh, until the next lecture, see you.